Shalom. Hey, Shabbat Shalom. Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, our, intros, our intros are always so weird. <laughs> well, it is it is weird making videos of yourself and putting them mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do kind of a quick video today. At least that's what we say. Yeah. Hopefully it will be quick. Um, and uh, something, do uh, you want to jump right into it or you want to say something? Or? Oh, we can jump right into it. I Hope mean, you're having a great Sabbath yeah. uh, out there. Today's an awesome oh. kind of restful Sabbath and we've needed it. We've had, uh, we've had some just amazing Sabbaths in the last, well, the last Sabbath yeah. was incredible. We had 25 people over here at our house. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's 25, somewhere around there. Yeah, something like that. And uh, it was awesome. I mean, so awesome. We just, it, it's crazy because after it was done, mm -hmm. um, it almost felt like we were leaving like vacation or something. It was like, sad. it was kind of sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To, to have everyone gone, you know? Yeah. So, but it was amazing time, amazing fellowship. It's just crazy and, that um, we're even like, that those words are coming out of our mouth. Truly. Like we've, yeah. something that Yah has, um, if you've been following us for any little bit of time or watched our testimony or know anything about us, then you know that, um, we like probably a lot of you have been, um, on this narrow path and you have been desperately praying and seeking like-minded believers fellowship um with other brothers and sisters and um we've been we've been praying that for for five years um we've been alone for five years we've been know? i mean we've had our family we've had our immediate family and and yah has been with us on this journey obviously um showing us that he's all we need truly he is all we need yeah. um on this walk, but it has been, it's not, it's like beyond an answered prayer. It's like, he, it's like our cup is just seriously. I keep saying our cups running over. Yeah. Our cup is so full, um, from what he has done in the last year. And, um, you know, and part, part of me is like, Oh, you know, we're on YouTube and we're, but YouTube, honestly, and Instagram and some of these, these platforms that, you know, have a lot of problems. Um, and I'm not going to lie. We, we sometimes want to be like, we're done with social media. Sometimes. It's, like yeah. A lot week. of time, but <laughs> it's like, the, these are the very platforms that y'all truly use to bring like minded. He knitted like brothers and sisters together, um, with, for us, um, through those, through those two avenues. And so with, when I, I'm always like, man, it's, it's kind of hard cause I don't want to, I don't want to let those go because who knows who else he can bring into our lives. Yeah. Um, but we're just so grateful. I, I mean, all praise be to the most high for, um, just giving out of his storehouse, like just abundantly just in the last year, he has just brought so many people to, um, our lives into our home. Um, I remember we said five years ago, probably five years ago, we were like, could you just imagine like just having families just running around on our property and celebrating feast days together and mm -hmm. Sabbaths together. And it's just, it's surreal. It's surreal to me to be here and to like have those people in our lives yeah. and, um, and to actually meet these people that you talk to like that, you know, it's so strange to probably foreign to so many people that like, actually it's almost like internet dating, you know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> It was, yeah, basically, yeah. It's, it's like it's internet for, for singles or yeah, something. It's yeah, it's like that, but it's like family. It's, and and truly, people have just come into our home and have felt like family from the very first moment we met them. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so last Sabbath was such a joy, such just unspeakable joy. That's mm. what I keep saying. It's unspeakable joy. Um. And just eternal friendships have been made. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. So, but today it's just our little family. Mm. We're back to our you know, to our usual routine, which is do nothing. Um, read the word, um, had an amazing Bible study this morning with, um, some of our best friends and it has just been a, Over the phone, yeah. yeah, it's been such a great, um, uh, such a great day. And it kind of feels like fall. This is weird. We started these videos in the fall and it's like, we're kind of transitioning it's back to down. like, at least today. Yeah. Least. Today. And we have our little sheepies in the background. <laughs> Look at them. So sweet. Um, so yeah, so you wanna jump right into it? Yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, we're just, we wanna try to just do a quick synopsis of uh, prophecy, what's to be expected in our time, yeah. and and kind of where we are. Um, I think, cause we, I, I honestly, I love prophecy. Mm -hmm. um, I've always, always been obsessed yeah. with Revelation, trying yeah. to figure it out. Of course, I've, I've come at it with kind of a Baptist mindset. I grew up Baptist. And uh, and since coming to Torah, uh, it's completely changed everything and how I view it and how, uh, what certain things mean. 
and uh, and so it's just precept upon precept, line upon line, right? Mm -hmm. So what does that um, mean? Well, it's Isaiah 29, I think. Right. And uh, it, it just means learning the first precepts before you learn the last precepts. Right. Uh, there's no, like, I mean, most people have said this, you would never want to read a book and start from the end. Some people you, do. Yeah, I mean, some, <laughs> some people, people do. Yeah, I mean, I did that in high school. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, reports. yes, but, uh, but I mean, you know, if you want to understand the book, if you want to understand, you know, what Yah expects of you, you understand what this whole thing is like what yeah. are we doing here you know why was israel who is israel all these mm -hmm. things don't start in the new testament the new testament Correct. can lead you there but it's it's honestly we have to start from the beginning and if you're brand new to this start in genesis and yes. believe what it says when it says there are waters above our head and there's a firmament dividing waters believe it instead of believing nasa when it says a donkey talked believe it when it says all these other things, these amazing things, Elijah was able to call down fire from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, um, like, turned, sorry. <laughs> King Nebuchadnezzar's, yeah, you know, grew, grew feathers like a yeah, bird. He and actually grew feathers. like an eagle. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, that's crazy he, to me. He turned into a griffin, but, <laughs> you know, that's that's a different subject. But but anyways, I mean, the, this, this word, this scripture is insane. It is crazy. Yeah. And the reason it is, is because truth is absolutely stranger than fiction. We grew up. We grew up in this world right now where we're not supposed to believe in these things. These things are uh, mythology. These things are, are right. you know, they're false. They're not real. Mm -hmm. The only thing real is what you see on TV, right. and that's what we believe. Or what we're truly taught, like from a history book or a science book or from somebody's mouth. Sure. Like yeah. believe, you know, believe what your teachers say. Believe what your pastors say. Believe what the scientists say. Believe what the historians say. Yeah. Believe what these professionals that, you know have these degrees say well most people believe what's on the history channel sure. or or uh what latest uh you know launch happened from spacex or whatever you know and all these things are just so they're so false yeah um and when you you don't really know that until you pick up you know this book you pick up this book and you actually read it and say yeah whatever you say i believe yeah you know show me the truth i'll believe whatever you say yeah and so you go there and you learn the first precepts of the instructions of the Torah, mm -hmm. Yah's actual ways, who he is, his feast days, everything. Those are your, some of your first precepts. Yeah. And it's just precept upon precept after that. Prophets, uh, you know, goes to the prophets. I mean, it's amazing. Psalms, prophets. Yeah. So yeah. when we get to Revelation, that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah. Revelation 20 and Revelation 21. The reason this is important, the reason we desire to know prophecy and seek prophecy um, it's because of, it is actually, uh, the desire of the saints. Mm -hmm. So when we read in Revelation 14, 12, uh, it's also talks about in Revelation 12, uh, Revelation one, multiple places, but the, the requirements for sainthood, this is the patience of the saints yeah. is the holding the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. This is the Messiah and, uh, and keeping the commandments of Elohim. Mm -hmm. That is the Torah. So if you want to be a saint, if you want to be set apart and enjoy um, the fruits of resurrection, enjoy eternal life, um, this is what's required of you. Yeah. This is what's required of me, of all of us, is to keep the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of Yeshua. So it's really important. What's what's amazing is Revelation defines what the testimony of Yeshua is. Because yeah. um, honestly, I mean, it, there's that verse in uh, Isaiah too that says, if they speak not, uh, what is it? Uh, to the Torah and, the and to the testimony. Oh, to the Torah and the testimony, yes. Yeah, if they no speak not of these yeah. things, there is no light in them. Yes. So if there is no, if you're not talking about the Torah and the testimony. Um, and your belief is, isn't in that. Yeah, there is no light in you. It's yeah. darkness. So when we look at these churches, the churches that we used to go to and the churches that are on every street corner, as Isaac, uh, Ezekiel 13 says, they built the high points on every street corner. When we look at these things, are they teaching the Torah? Are they teaching the testimony, the testimony of Yah, what happened yes. on the mountain, the testimony of Moses, these things were, were Yah has only visited his people yeah. a few times throughout history, just a few times. Yeah. He's come down and actually shown his glory just a few times. We have to believe those testimonies yeah. uh, of those times. And uh, if they're not talking about these things, uh, they're in darkness. They yeah. aren't preaching light and they're actually uh, the hands of Hasatan. Uh, doing his handiwork, doing his things on this earth. Right. Uh, so when we talk about the testimony of Yeshua, Revelation defines it perfectly for us. It tells us what the testimony of Yeshua is. It's in uh, Revelation 19.10. Yes. You may read it? Yeah, sure. Okay. 
And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, See, do not do it. I am your fellow servant and of your brothers who possess the witness or testimony of Yeshua. Worship Elohim. For the witness or testimony of Yeshua is the spirit of prophecy. Uh, so that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so the testimony of Yeshua is the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. So it's actually the same spirit, the word of Elohim that came to the prophets. Yes. That came to all the disciples mm -hmm. as they're talking about Man, they're, they're prophesying of what's to come. You need to repent. The kingdom of heaven is nigh. It's the, yes. it's the actual gospel, yes. the gospel of the kingdom. So it is what John is talking about here. He held the testament of Yeshua mm -hmm. by prophesying. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is actually found in other places. It's in uh, the Targum uh, of Exodus, Exodus uh, Targum Exodus 13, right? uh, 16. No, it, 13, Targum, 16. No, 33, 16. Yes, Sorry. 33, 16. <laughs> 3531 of Exodus Targum and Exodus 37 8 Targum. Yes, and yeah. Psalms Targum 14 1 and Psalms, Psalms 42, 42 as well. Uh, it's talking about the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, this is why it's important. This is why uh, we are so um, passionate. In, passionate, yeah, <laughs> on trying to find out where we are in history, trying to read and understand these prophets. Daniel himself prayed to Yah. While he's in Babylon, yes. please tell me what Jeremiah meant yes. when he prophesied. Yes. Daniel desired to know. He was looking through all the books trying to figure out what Jeremiah meant. Yes. And what did Yah do? He sent down, is it Gabriel or Michael? I think he mm -hmm. sent Gabriel to come down and, t and teach him. Um, and teach him what the prophecy meant. Yeah. Uh, these things are so important to understand where we are in history. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> just that that's what we're talking about. That's what thats what the big deal is. If you're like, well, why do these people why care? Does it matter? Why do these people care about the millennial kingdom? Or why does it matter? Or is it necessary? Or, you know, any of these things. This is why. Yeah. Because it actually is the testimony of Yeshua is talking about the end. You know, because we, we said this this morning. When I dig into prophecy, yes, it it does it's something. A light switch. Yeah, it does something within my mind. It it, ch it flips this light switch, it's and flushed. all of a sudden, when I'm into prophecy really deep, all of a sudden I care so much less about this world, and I start caring about the things of the next world, the yes. kingdom, the kingdom of Elohim, my inheritance. Yes, I start caring about those things rather yeah. than what I can achieve here. Right. So uh, that's why the spirit of prophecy is so important. So we got to study these things out. Right. Well, and that just I mean that's a. That just makes me think of, um, you know, the very last chapter of Revelation, which we're not going to really talk about, but um, where John says, blessed are those doing the commands, so that the authority shall be theirs into unto the tree of life and to enter through the gates of the city. You know, so it's it's keeping those commands, right? It's blessed are those that keep the commands who and hold the testimony of Yeshua that's talked about all through Revelation, that have that desire, that spirit of prophecy within them to seek out and to understand the honesty. I think the concealed matters of y'all. I really do believe like some of these things are veiled. It's not black and white. Um, that you have to, it, you do have to build upon. You kind of have to build a case, right? You have to build a case. Um, and and you and it's funny because like Daniel, Revelation, Enoch, as as we've talked about in previous videos, Amos, um, all of these are um, supporting evidence, you know, for um, a millennial kingdom potentially happening when you line it up with a timeline. Of you know of what history says mm -hmm. this world you know the humanity the timeline of humanity and, and of history, but you know I think foundationally like you know we've done we've done several videos that where Yas led us to share you know about the short season, and I think what we've what we're realizing is it's important to kind of start like not from the beginning but Revelation twenty I think is kind of like a start here video right yeah Can you say that it's foundational yeah. To so start, yeah, the timeline. yeah. So if if you're like, whoa, millennial rain already happened. What does this mean? You know, yes. rather than going back, we've done some videos on it. You know, ninety three is a great a great mm -hmm. uh, thing to study out. Uh, but you know, this is like this is you know, I think uh, just a really good. It's like where you said, we began. Yeah, I think it's a really good beginning just to understand the timeline because there's a lot of misconceptions with the millennial kingdom. I think yeah. that's the biggest problem with understanding where we are. Uh, with the millennial kingdom, it's because of the misconception with the the MK. Because right. we we a what lot we of think time, we know of yeah, it. what we think we know of it. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of just things that we've been taught, a yeah. lot of things that we assumed. Yeah. Uh, but they're actually not in scripture. Uh, the millennial kingdom is a very interesting time. Yeah. Um, and it's not a time of complete peace uh, on the earth. Right. Uh, there is peace, and there was peace. Yeah. Uh, but in a different way. And so we can talk about some of those misconceptions as we dig into Revelation. 
20. This was supposed to be a short video. I know. But so I'm like, let's get, let's get into gonna it. Gonna be, okay. <laughs> All right. So just, we're going to run down really quick. Uh, I don't know that we're going to read a ton of verses. Uh, yeah. I think if, just... What you need to do, not you need to do, I'm not telling anybody to do anything, but yeah. uh, what we all need to do is go read Revelation 20 and 21. Just to understand a brief history, a brief timeline of everything. Yeah. You can get basically some, some, uh, you know, some things set in stone of where we are. And then the rest, you can just dig in with the prophets, dig in with especially all the, the books that were taken out of our scriptures. They were taken out for what? a reason. Like, uh, you know, for, yeah. 2nd Ezra, 2nd uh, Baruch, um, Enoch, obviously. Enoch, yeah, there's Ascension of Isaiah. A lot of these extra books, Ascension of Isaiah was not in the canon, but uh, there's a lot of these extra books that they wouldn't have us read because they're talking about our time right now. Yeah. Um, and there's so many prophecies for America. Uh, you know, I was told my whole, all growing up, America's not in prophecy. It's not there because we're going to be taken up in the rapture. Right. It's not true. Right. Um, I can look around. This this country does not de deserve to be taken up in a rapture. No. So, anyways, um, so real quick, we'll just run over it. Um, yeah. So, Revelation 20. So, it begins with um, the beast and the false prophet uh, being put into um, the bottomless pit. Uh, this is when Yeshua comes back. Okay, so he, whether we believe it, it's already happened or hasn't happened, he's coming back to usher in the millennial kingdom. Um, and so when he comes back, he has he's going to uh, kill the beast. Uh, I think it's on the Mount of Olives. He says his feet will land on the Mount of Olives. It'll split in two. Um, and, uh, and he will kill the beast. He'll bury him in Israel. So the beast will be buried in Israel, which is very interesting mm -hmm. with some things we've been studying about, about the Antichrist. Right. Uh, but the Antichrist will be buried in Israel, uh, along with the false prophet, and they will be put into the bottomless pit. And the devil will be uh, bound by Michael, uh, the archangel. Um, there's a lot on Michael. We could do a whole video on Michael yeah. uh, and how he could be Metatron, which is actually Enoch. Uh, that's a whole different subject. But he is Michael, the prince, the great prince that stands up for the people. He is the prince of... Uh, of Israel. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these, there's angels over all these countries, right. uh, which is very interesting because we used to have 70 countries for 70 different, for 70 different languages from 70 different angels that came on Tower of Babel. Interesting. Now we have over 200 countries, which actually matches the fallen 200 angels in Enoch. So have they returned? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Really? You yeah. told me this before, but I forgot. So they, there's, pro wow. there's high probability that they've returned. This is when it, within Enoch 93. Mm -hmm. It shows that the uh, the angels did come mm -hmm. back. Uh, they came back for judgment. Uh, they've been released for judgment. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> so you can get on these rabbit trails. It's okay, Daniel. It's your fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we got the, the thousand year reign right after that. And if you're reading in Revelation 20, right after that. Satan, Hasatan, is released for a little season. This is the short season, the time of deception. This is where we believe we are in the history uh, right now. Um, but uh, he's released for a short season of deception, a time to deceive the nations. Uh, this is just proof that, ha that Yah is extremely merciful. He even gives Hasatan a second chance. Mm -hmm. um, there is some... Uh, some proof uh, that I'm looking into right now that even uh, the beast is released again. Um, it's with in Isaiah, but you know that's something different. But yeah. so uh, the short season begins after the millennial reign happens um, or commences or ends, um, and so these things could be at different times. Okay, so I don't know. Um, it, it just says after the millennial reign is over, he's released. The short season begins. Who knows if it's immediately after? Who knows if it's a hundred years after? Yeah, right. um, but it's it's after that. Mm -hmm. So um, so uh, Hasatan's release. He goes to deceive uh, and gather all the nations uh, from the four corners of the earth. Now, what would he have to do during that time? He would have to convince the whole world that right. the millennial kingdom didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Because how would you? How would Hasatan come and deceive all nations if Yeshua was ruling and reigning? True. Yeah. Literally, he has to go out and convince you that Yeshua is not here, mm -hmm. and that um, and that he didn't. You know, probably that there was no beast, and probably that you know, millennial reign is still to happen. It never happened. Yeah. So he has to convince. So that's a really important thing to look at if if we think even that the elect are deceived in the end, right? 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. there's a verse. Is that that's a verse, right? Yeah, yeah. I Even mean, though that could be deceived. Could yes. be deceived. Yeah. Is that Thessalonians or that's in the canon? Right? Uh, I think that. Okay. I don't know. I didn't we'll make that it, up. We'll put though. it up there. Yeah. But no, you I'm, didn't. Just, no, I'm saying good. that because I really believe like churches could be that the elect that are deceived right now. Sure. Like, we could even you know the the body of believers that guard the commands of of Yah and keep the testimony of Yeshua. I mean, I think if if we if we say we're going to we're we're going to believe what we've been told about the timeline and where we're at in the timeline of history and because the historians are correct yeah. you know everything's accurate could we be deceived about you know about the, I mean why would we not yeah. like why would he not like this could be we we think that the you know the the globe is one of the greatest lies ever told but could, it's all part of the deception. Yeah, it's all part of it. Yeah. Like the time, it's all really about, I think, the timeline. And the time, like we've talked about this morning, the timeline has changed. Mm -hmm. You know, we went from BC to AD, and it's like we've got these different calendars now. It's like it's all confusion. Yeah. It's all like created to to create confusion Absolutely. by the enemy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you look at uh, just a real quick rabbit trail here, if you look at, um, um, there's a lot of proof that we were keeping um, the. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of proof that we were uh, keeping the actual days all the way up for uh, the year count from creation, uh, so we didn't start over uh, in eighty um, and start keeping this new count. Well, uh, Israel keeps the count, right? Like, they uh, keep the count according Israel. to the Masoretic, which right. is to hide Yeshua. Right. Uh, if we go by the LXX, uh, the timeline right now is like seven thousand nine hundred and something. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we've already passed the seventh millennium. Yeah. So the seventh millennium would usher in the last day, the seventh day of Yahuwah, yeah. which is the day of rest, yes. which is the thousand years Rain. of yeah. rest. One day with Yahuwah is as a thousand years. Yes. So that would have started in the year 500 or so. Yeah. Okay. So let's just, uh, keep going. uh, yeah, we'll just keep going. So he gathers all, uh, Hasatan deceives all the nations. He gathers from the breadth of the whole earth. Yeah. Uh, the four corners of the world. Yeah, he gathers. His numbers is the sand of sea. I yeah. just think that's important to understand. It's not like a few armies. Yeah, I mean, this is like the whole world. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. how many billions of people in the world right now? Mm -hmm. So you can imagine that it's a time like this oh, because yeah. we have the largest number of people in the entire world, more than there ever was. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we just saw seventy percent of the world. Uh, obey a government psyop mm -hmm. um, three years ago. So what in the world? 70%. Something's, something's about to happen. It's going to be even worse. And seventy uh, percent were deceived. That's yeah. the majority. In, in my opinion, the, the new deception is going to look good. It's going to look like uh, yeah. to fight the old deception. You know. Um, well, it is somewhat we've re we've returned to normal. We have we're like oh this is oh we, we've come out of this like time of darkness and we're in the, we're in the you know almost like we're like in this like kind of false light right like yeah. oh you know we everybody's returned to normal we can do I mean we are living in a time of partying and a time of like just like. I don't know, spending obscene amounts of money and just sure. like the world is truly like, it, it's like they, nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like the last three years never happened, yeah. but we're even more indulgent and more like, you know, into ourselves than ever before, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, anyway. Well, the deception is going to be the false light. This is the checkered floor of Freemasonry. You give, you control both narratives. Right. So that's why they want to control the dark side and the light side. Yeah. Um, but actually, the, the false light is only the enlightened one, which is Lucifer. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, all of it's just controlled to to follow him. Right. So, um, you know, we, we know the, the true light is, is Proverbs 6.23, the mm -hmm. Torah is light. The commandment is a lamp and the Torah is light. And Yeshua warns us, like, what, right, what fellowship has light with darkness. Absolutely. So, we can't have light. You know, if it's not Torah, it's not light. Right. Even though it might look like light. Even though it might be Trump or it might be whatever. It yeah. might look good. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It, it's not Torah, so it's not light. Um, but anyways, okay. So, um, <laughs> so, so they go, so they, they wage war against. Yeah, so they go, he gathers up everyone from all over the world, from the four corners of the earth, to wage war against the camp of the saints. This is for the Gog, Magog war. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a really big war that's going to happen. And uh, they want to go against the camp of the saints. So the saints are still here somewhere. Uh, there is a camp of the saints. These are the set-apart ones. These are the ones who keep the Torah. Uh, of Yahweh and have the testimony of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. um, and these, in my opinion, are the, of the first resurrection. Um, they're the ones who got to take place, take part in the first resurrection, which was um, 
which was uh, at the beginning of the millennial reign. The donkey rolling around. Donkey's rolling around. But anyways, um, so uh, yeah. So they come against the camp of the set apart once a beloved city, the city of the great king. Yeah, they right? come. Yeah, they come against the the camp of the saints, and then Yah's done. He's done with them, and he comes down. And basically, this is the day of Yahweh. This is the uh, the day of you know you hear the day of the Lord. This yeah. is the time when he really he destroys everything. And would it wouldn't it, isn't it amazing because we're entering seven thousand nine hundred year mark somewhere around there. And the day of Yahweh is the eighth great day. Mm -hmm. It's the eighth day. Yeah. Um, it's also what we call Sunday. Yeah. Uh, not sure what I believe on that. I've kind of tried to study that out a little bit um, because we've always heard, oh, yeah, it's Sunday is the day of the Lord. Day of, yeah. uh, the day of the Lord uh, is not a good thing. Yeah. The, the day of the Lord is a horrible time. It's a time of sorrow. It's a time when everyone just gets destroyed and judged. Uh, because of their wickedness. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and we're nearing that eighth millennium, which is the eighth great day. It's the day of circumcision. It's the day of pain. It's the day to uh, rebirth uh, the world. And that's exactly what happens here in Revelation, the next Revelation 21. Right. Uh, he destroys the heavens and the earth. He destroys this whole army, the Gog Magog army. He throws uh, Hasatan down into the lake of fire uh, where the beast and the false prophet are. And, uh, and then he recreates mm -hmm. uh, the heavens and the earth. And then, then, New Jerusalem that comes down, comes down from the heavens. And he dwells with us, with New Jerusalem. Um, so, so that right there is a bit of a misconception. Sure, yeah. Do you want to touch on that really quickly? Yeah, when we talk about millennial reign, millennial kingdom, uh, you know, a lot of times people ask us, you know, well, where, if millennial kingdom happened, where, where was it? Like, where is the where is kingdom? Right now? Yeah, where's the kingdom? You know, yeah. did it get destroyed? Whatever, you know? Uh, we learned uh, from Daniel uh, five or six times in Daniel, um, six times actually, it tells you that the kingdom is forever. The kingdom it has always been forever. Yeah. It's never ending. Yeah. Um, but when it actually gets to come down, this is in Daniel 2, it comes down and destroys the statue. And this is when it destroys everything. It breaks in pieces every kingdom that ever existed. It finally destroys Rome. Yeah. And it comes down, and uh, and but we we know through Revelation twenty one that this is at the end. This is at mm -hmm. the end of the Gog Magog War. This is after the millennial reign. Right. So I think that's really important. So when we think about millennial reign, uh, the kingdom wasn't here, mm -hmm. uh, or if it was here, it it left, but it was never here. Um, the millennial the kingdom only comes down uh, at the end. Yeah. So. I think that's a that's a big thing when we think about millennial yes. reign, yeah. um, and not that it it didn't exist because it did, and these saints, uh, the saints that got to take part in the first resurrection, this is like uh, the prophets, this is like Peter and uh, all the apostles, mm -hmm. and um, and these people who got martyred, right. and they were they were Rome was killing off so many people in the first and second and third centuries, right? Um, you know they were just killing anyone who kept the Torah, anyone who believed in the testimony of Yeshua. And uh, these people were getting martyred, yeah. horrible deaths. These are the ones that were beheaded by the beast. And they got to enjoy the first resurrection. That's what it says mm -hmm. in, I think, uh, in Revelation 20 mm -hmm. or Revelation 19. Yeah. It's telling you these are the ones, or Revelation 20, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah, 20. So, so when, we, when we think about that, these are of the first resurrection. Right. And they got to be saints, a rule of saints and uh, priests and kings here on the earth. With Yeshua. With Yeshua. Right. So, uh, in my belief is that, um, and there's a lot of evidence to this, they got to enjoy the the covenants of the of Melchizedek priesthood, uh, which is just the priesthood of the firstborn. It's always existed. It started with Adam. Um, but they got to transcend the veil. Um, that is what a Melchizedek can do. Uh, can go up and down. It basically can visit the kingdom and come back down to earth. Right. Uh, this is what Elijah did. This is what Ezra did. This is what Enoch did. Mm -hmm. um, Shem. So Shem. This is what so many people uh, were doing throughout history. Uh, but when they got to be resurrected, you know, uh, carnal things cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Our corruption cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You must put on incorruption mm -hmm. to inherit it. So you must get a new body. Mm -hmm. You must be transformed. Um, and this is what happened. They got to be transformed. And they got to go up and down, basically. That's why they were still here. There was a camp of saints for the Gog Magog War to happen. Right. Um, so, 
Yeah. Anyways, that's a quick timeline. I hope that maybe that uh, answers some questions. So when we think about the millennial kingdom, we have to understand that the kingdom did not come down until later. Yeah. Uh, millennial kingdom. Uh, and then, and then I think we need to like unpack it with other verses and other, the prophets and mm -hmm. some of these other books. Um, so understanding the millennial kingdom better, what, what did the millennial kingdom look like? Right. Well, I think also another, um, that's a timeline, but I think I was just thinking about like some misconceptions for me personally, and this could get we could go in so many different directions, but, um, as a believer growing up in a time uh, where I do believe like, like I, we grew up in the nineties, right? We were born in 83. Um, but, um, I, I really feel like there was a time of like repentance and preaching, you know, we can say fire and brimstone, you know, um, in the churches, but there was a, there, there was true revival going on. You know, I think there Absolutely. was more, there was, there was, there certainly wasn't fighting against the law of Elohim. Um, then there was definite, like they, I almost felt, I almost feel like they were kind of like John the Baptist, a lot of churches were like John the Baptist, you know, repent for the kingdom of, of, of God, of Yah is, is near. Um, and so we were really heavily entrenched, at least in my church and a lot of revivals, a lot of revelation weeks where, you know, our pastors would dive in and, and teach us all about revelation. We watched the thief in the night. We watched all these things, you know, left yeah. behind. I read all the left behind series. So I think to me, that's also some of this unlearning that has to happen too. Yeah. We have to almost reread revelation with the lens of not knowing anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> because I think there's some, you know, things like the rapture and are you pre-trip or post-trip, you know, tribulation, sure. all of these things. I don't know if you want to talk about either one of those. Well, I think it's important. It might be too, too long to kind of go into those. Subjects, no, no. But... Well, I think it's important to, to read prophecy like that because um, yeah. I've said this before, but you know, when Yeshua came, uh, they weren't ready. They knew that he was coming. There was a prophecy. There was many prophecies of his coming. Uh, I think a lot of people are expecting him around that time. Yeah. Um, Daniel goes up right up into the year prophecy. Right. And I think they knew exactly when he was coming. Uh, but he didn't look like what they were expecting. They were expecting a deliverer, a mm -hmm. king, uh, probably a strong, tall, handsome you know, guy who's going to like... You said handsome and he did this. I didn't like... mean to. My hair like... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna have to cut that out. You shouldn't have said anything. I was trying no, to. No, leave it in. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I just derailed you. <laughs> Handsome. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, they were expecting like a king. They were expecting a ruler. Uh, yeah. You know, someone who could, who was going to fulfill all these prophecies. And uh, and you know, he came and he was lowly. I yeah. mean, he was. Uh, he looked like home. He probably looked homeless. Yeah, very unexpected. No way he's the king. No way he's the Messiah. Yeah, yeah. and so they didn't understand prophecy because they did, they were they were so ready for something, and they already made up in their mind they had a preconceived yes, bias of what it was yes, going to look like. Yes, based on probably what they were taught and told. Too. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. What the Pharisees were teaching yeah. or what the rabbis were teaching them, and right. and so that's how we have to look at prophecy now. We have to kind of look at it and unfold it in a different way, and kind of open our minds to what it could be. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, we could be wrong. I, I, you know, I think, yeah. I think that the millennial reign has happened. I think there's tons of scriptural proof I've seen. Um, and we'll do a video on this and talk more about it because it's, it's all, it'd be a, a huge video, but there's a lot of scripture specifically pointing to the fall of Rome, uh, to start the, the millennial kingdom, uh, for Yeshua to come back. There's a, actually a lot in history uh, mm -hmm. to point to this. Mm -hmm. So, um, that would be, uh, I think there's a lot of uh, scriptural proof that it happened, but we could be wrong. Like yeah. test us out and test this out. And I encourage everyone, like we need to go back to Revelation 20 and 21 and read it well, and understand uh, the order of these things. Right. And I think what you've, you know, what you said this to me the other day, and it's really helped change the way that I'm, you know, when I talk to you, I ask, you know, I, I ask, you know, you know, reveal yourself to me, you know, give me revelation. Right. But, you know, you've been praying like, reteach me you know prophecy like re like reveal it to me and like differently you know what i mean like yeah. differently in a way that and it does like it really i just went through and read a lot of the read all of the prophets um i won't call them the minor prophets because i think they're all important um but the smaller books and i you know i was blown away with them but then you know a few months 
<laughs> you know, just in the last couple of months you're reading and you're like, Hey, did you see this? And, and Amos are ever about, you know, millennial kingdom. I was like, no, I just, I totally missed that, you yeah. know? And so I think, you know, having that lens too, of desiring to understand the end, to understanding the last days, understanding what is happening right now, um, in our, in our world, in the sense of like what has happened and what will happen, but with a different lens of like, really like, like hungering to, to see it, you know, from like, from y'all's perspective, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, I think is, is something that's really changed the way that we see, you know, some of these things. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think, uh, you know, definitely we want to talk more about this. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we have been, <laughs> we've already been talking a lot about it. Yeah, well, well, yeah. Kingdom, I know, but I, yeah, more. We, yeah, more about it, you yeah. know, because I think it's really important yeah. uh, just to understand where we're at. Um, but I, hopefully that'll give like a good starting point for anyone who's, who's seeking this out and studying this out. And maybe you don't know exactly where we are uh, in history. And uh, and honestly, maybe like, you haven't questioned even. Yeah, um, honestly, I think we all need to get on board quickly because uh, I'm seeing this and a lot of people are seeing this that um, Google is changing. Mm, yeah. uh, the internet is is not putting forth the information it used to. Um, I, it's harder for me to find some things now. They're kind of getting hidden and uh, and they're changing some things, especially Wikipedia. If you get any of your information from Wikipedia, it changes almost daily. Yeah, uh, They're changing stuff all the time. So I think uh, our true history it's being harder and harder to find. Um, and I think, you know, with me, I try to go back to any ancient source, anything that's as old as I can get. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, um, because we, I mean, we found something in today, that's today and Daniel just, I mean, Daniel gives a whole different list of kings for Persia than, than Google does, or than, you know, the, the timeline the, of them. Yeah, than official history. Right. Uh, and I'm mean, no wonder they would, because they're trying to hide Messiah. They're trying to hide the prophecy in Daniel 9.25. Okay, so... All these things, they're trying to hide so much. Yeah. Uh, and so why would they even care about the hide history uh, unless they were already lying about it? So True. that's yeah. something that I think we really need to uh, dig into prophecy now mm -hmm. and seek this now. I think that's why um, this question is Question it. Question yeah, what we... Question, yeah. Yeah. I think this is why this is, our, our, uh, why this is kind of being given to the body right now. Um, I guess in the last... Four or five years it's been given, but really heavily right now, there's a lot of people seeking Millennial Kingdom and trying to understand it. And uh, because I think um, if we're not if we're not careful, we're going to be deceived. Yeah. Um, you know, there could be another beast coming that's going to say, hey, I'm ushering in a Millennial Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Well, if we already know it happened, we're going to be like, hey, that dude's, that dude's, that dude's a beast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyways, Hopefully that helped, and uh, hopefully that was uh, yeah. something. I don't know. I know that I constantly read over those two chapters. I love them because yeah. uh, whenever I find something, I'm like, oh, does this fit? And it fits, yeah. and I have to, like, you know, understand it right. better. And, you know? and if you haven't read all of Revelation, read all of Revelation. Start with chapter 1. Absolutely. You now, if you haven't read chapters 1 through 19, read those first. I mean, like you said, truth is stranger than fiction. There's some crazy stuff. Crazy in the beginning in of Revelation. Yeah. Um, that may not make a whole lot of sense, but it's okay. <laughs> Keep reading. Yeah. Um, I've, I've read Revelation so many times and I'm still, I'm asking so many questions of you. I don't under, I don't understand yeah, a lot. No one, I don't think anyone but, understands Revelation. Yeah. But truly, I think read it with a lens of like asking the question, okay, do I believe what I've been taught about history? I, I mean, I know for me personally, um, what we were taught in school, I mean, we were taught like some broad world history view, some ridiculous American history, you know, pledging allegiance to the American flag. All of these things, I think, are just a part of this great distraction and deception from the enemy, right? Yeah. He wants us to know more about like this than than what we knew about. Sorry, <laughs> there's such a distraction. Um, than like true biblical history. Like I'm just now digging in and, and starting to even understand the timeline of, of like of real history. Of yeah. scriptural history of scriptural these kings history. like what you're talking about um and that wasn't taught to me and i went to a christian school you know it really yeah. wasn't right you know, we should know history through through the lens of God's scripture word. Yes. scripture same thing we should know biology through scripture we should know cosmology yes. through scripture yes um well you said revelation and I, I don't know that this is i mean i don't know someone might someone might could tell me different but i don't think there's any book uh, within scripture that tells you that you're blessed if you read it uh, Revelation offers yes. up uh, blessings if you read it. John yeah. says, if you read this book of prophecy, you'll be blessed. Yeah. So I think that's important. I want to be blessed. I think most of us want to be blessed. Let's read Revelation, try yeah. to understand it. 
And like I said, if, if we can read it and just kind of get just a broad view of it and then use other scriptures to unpack it and really understand what it means. Yeah. Um, so anyways, that's it. Yeah. For maybe on oh, 40 minutes. That's not too yeah. bad. That's a short video for us. Yeah. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one.